Want to listen to this episode ad free? Head on over to our Patreon, patreon.com slash ivory tower boiler room and get a free trial for the ITBR professor level. And you can actually watch this episode as a video episode as well. While you're at it, did you know that on Spotify, we now have a subscription service for $10 a month. You get access to all of our ad-free episodes plus any bonus episodes. So make sure that you rate, review, and follow the Ivory Tower Boiler Room. Make sure that you follow us on Instagram and TikTok at Ivory Tower Boiler Room. And follow Mary DePippi's show, True Crime and Academia, at True Crime and Academia. Thank you all for your support. And without further ado, here's today's episode. True Crime friends, welcome back to another episode of True Crime in Academia. I am your host, Mary DePippi. I hope you all have had a wonderful work week this week and are enjoying a relaxing weekend. I know I am. It has been quite, I mean, this whole year has just been a shit show so far. I mean, we're only in March. Um, But yeah, you know, this week in particular was pretty hectic for me with work stuff. Um, but yeah, so I'm just looking to relax and enjoy this weekend. And without any further ado, let's get into this news update, shall we? We have a couple stories that I really want to talk about. The first one being the disappearance, pretty much, of Kate Middleton. I mean, obviously she's not officially, like, missing by any capacity, but... Why haven't we seen her since her abdominal surgery that she went to have done in early January? You know? And I mean, hey, look, I'm not saying because I don't feel like like that I'm owed <laughs> or that any of us are owed this information. Um, you know, like I said, it's just a little concerning that we haven't seen her and there really doesn't seem to be any sort of legitimate answer as to what's going on so obviously I don't know if any of you have heard some of these theories um the first one I feel like is the most popular some people think that maybe she got a BBL you know those things take a long time to recover from and maybe she just underestimated you know her healing time and when she'd be able to be out and about who knows again (laughs) it's not really our business but it's interesting to think about Uh, Another theory I've heard of is that the surgery was just more serious or more extensive than initially thought or believed, Um, which again, I mean, all of this is technically, like I've been saying, her own damn business. But again, like if it's something on a medical standpoint, I feel like no one is owed that information. Like that's, you know, private, personal information. So again, it could be that the surgery was just more extensive and therefore, you know, she needs more time to heal. Um, Another theory is that William's cheating on her, which this wouldn't be the first time we've heard rumors of him being unfaithful to her, which is like, (sighs) William is so fucking ugly. Like he used to be so hot, but like clearly karma has caught up with him. And I mean, we've all seen him. He looks like that. And his wife is Kate Middleton. I mean, she's gorgeous. So, I mean, first, I mean, by saying that, I'm just like, how is anyone trying to sleep with him looking like that? But again, I guess he's got that Prince Kingly. So I guess maybe people overlook that. But again, like you're with Kate. She is literally the best you could ever, ever do. You got her at the hottest point of your life and you look like this and she still had three children with you. So, you know, I'm just saying, I hope... That bastard isn't cheating, but I also wouldn't be surprised. The last thing, and this one I saw on TikTok while I was scrolling. Someone, I forget who it is, and I apologize for not sharing that or giving you a shout out. 
to the person who created this, but someone put up a theory that they think because of Hen- or not Henry, this is the second time I've done that today, Harry's book, The Spare, when he describes how William's been violent with him, some people think that maybe it's possible that William has been violent with Kate and potentially did something you know to physically really harm her and that's why we haven't seen her so I don't know I really hope that one is not true obviously um another thing though I feel like if that had been the situation I feel like we would have seen that by now or like heard about violence from him towards Kate but you know who knows so I will keep you all posted on that. I mean, I'm sure you'll all keep yourselves posted <laughs> because it is quite the mystery. Where are you, Kate? All I know is I just hope she's okay. And lastly, for the news update, I kind of wanted to end on a high note, <laughs> pun intended. Um, and also just because we haven't had a fun news story in a while, but... Recently, the New New Orleans, not New Orleans, New Orleans Police Department headquarters has been infested with rats, which doesn't sound like news. But the fact that they infiltrated the evidence room and ate a bunch of weed and now are all high is and also hilarious. I mean, part of it is like I feel bad for those poor little guys. But also, I mean, what would you rather see? I mean, I'd not even rather say, but like, what would you rather prefer, you know, health and safety wise for these rats to have gotten into the weed or for them to have gotten into the coke, you know, because those poor little things definitely would have keeled over (laughs) had they ate uh, cocaine and not weed. But regardless, I think, you know, I hate to be like, that's adorable that they did that. But I mean... The idea of seeing a bunch of little high rats, I think, is kind of adorable in a way. I mean, again, it was self-inflicted, to be fair, but also it's not like they know. But, you know, I don't think PETA is going to sound the alarms for this, but, you know, I hope there's video footage of it soon, to be honest, because I would love to watch that and just see, like, was it one Or did they kind of just all go in and scatter and just each found their own bag? Like, I don't know. My morbid curiosity really wants to know. (laughs) But anyway, that is all I have for you guys in the news update. Let's take a quick break and then we will get into this week's case. Hi, this is Dr. Andrew Rimby. And when I'm not here on the podcast, I am consulting with small businesses, undergraduate students, graduate students, podcasters, and those in media. So if you're curious about the work that I've done with my consultation services, you could just type me in on Google, Ivory Tower Boiler Room, and you'll see a few reviews pop up. I've worked on college admission essays for undergraduate students. I've revamped and expanded a small business's social media marketing campaign right here in Port Jefferson, New York. And I've also worked on a graduate student's thesis for her physician assistant program. So if you want to seek me out or inquire about my consultation services, just email me. That's the easiest way to reach me at ivorytowerboilerroom at gmail.com. That's easy to remember. And tis the season for college admission essays, both undergraduate and graduate, thesis writing, dissertation writing. Um, Do you want to create a podcast and you don't know where to begin? Media work, um, how to open a TikTok, how to start creating videos on TikTok, what to do with your Instagram. All of that I have done. So just reach out to me. Are you a fan of LGBTQ plus books? plays, movies, TV shows, well, then I have the magazine for you. It's called The Gay and Lesbian Review. The GNLR is a bi-monthly magazine of history, culture, and politics that publishes essays in a wide range of disciplines, as well as a slew of reviews of books, plays, and movies. Each issue brings you consistently intelligent, lively, thought-provoking articles focused on a unifying theme, and it brings together the leading minds on the topic. 
So I just had on Dr. Richard Schneider Jr., the founder and editor-in-chief of the GNLR, for the GNLR's 30th anniversary. Happy birthday, GNLR. Dr. Richard Schneider talked about their special volume called Outer Appearances, More Faces from the Annals of the GNLR, illustrations by Charles Heffling. They cover current LGBTQ artists such as Harvey Firestein, Melissa Etheridge, Alan Cumming, James Whiteside, Alison Bechdel, and even David Sedaris, and of course, many others like Stephen Sondheim. There's even a supplemental issue that comes with your commemorative volume. And Andrew Halloran, the writer of Dancer from the Dance, he reviews a book called Morris about E.M. Farster's Morris, written by one of our ITBR guests, David Grevin. So we can't wait for you all to experience this beautiful 30th anniversary GNLR issue. Have you heard some of my GNLR interviews, including Dr. Andrew Lear's discussion about male, male love in ancient Greek society and Ignacio Darnad opening and blasting the closet door in the queer male art world? Well, Definitely make sure you listen to them after this episode. Head to glreview.org. Make sure you subscribe to their magazine. You'll see there's a section that says subscribe at the top. Enter the promo code ITBR50. That's ITBR50 to receive 50% off, 50% off any print or digital subscription. Enjoy your reading. LGBT stories are universal, but each one speaks to the individual heart and soul of the writer telling it. Do you have a story to tell? Or have you been moved by an LGBT book, film, painting, television show, or other form of media? Then the Gay and Lesbian Review wants to hear from you. The GNLR believes in bringing awareness to queer art and artists through reviews, commentary, and thought pieces in which the author relates their personal lives to a particular piece of art, a novel, a movie. In addition to the print magazine, the GNLR also publishes articles on its blog. So you can see all of this on glreview.org. That's G-L-R-E-V-I-E-W.org. Remember, you get 50% off your subscription of the GL Review magazine when you use the promo code ITBR50. That's 50% off your print or digital subscription when you use promo code ITBR50. To learn more about submitting an article for the GNLR, Visit their writer's guidelines. The link is located at the bottom of their homepage. And if you have any questions, email Stephen Hemrick. That's S-T-E-P-H-E-N dot H-E-M-R-I-C-K at glreview.org. The GNLR and its readers can't wait to see what you have to say. So you've heard me gush about my friend Mandy Bengal's business called Mandy Made It. It is a cricket and crochet company. And as she says, especially for the kids at heart, which I think actually comes from Wizard of Oz. So I know that Mandy has made such beautiful items for Mary to Pippi, for myself. I have a Hocus Pocus bed and breakfast sign that says Sanderson bed and breakfast in my living room. She's also made the poison apple from Snow White for me as a crocheted item. Recently, I gifted my boyfriend a crocheted ghost face bouquet that is just so gothically, hauntingly beautiful. She, I'm sure, can make you bunny rabbits, flowers, anything that you want for the spring season. She's making Pokemon items right now. So make sure you follow her at Mandy Made It, M A N D E E Made It. And you'll see an example of all of the different items that she's been crafting right now. And because our Wicked Book Club is on April 7th at 4 p.m., I definitely know that she could make an Alphaba and Glinda item for you. So I'm going to actually reach out to her because I love to have my hands on an Alphaba or Wicked Wizard of Oz Wicked collab item from Mandy Made It. And make sure you mention ITBR because she will gift you with a small free gift with your first order from Mandy Made It. Enjoy your crafts. At around 11 p.m. on December 13th, 2020, 21-year-old Texas State University music student, 
Jason Landry, left his apartment in San Marcos for his parents' home in Missouri City for winter break. Now, despite the challenges of COVID, Jason actually had a good time at school. But sadly, Jason would never make it back to school, let alone even make it home that night. Now, I couldn't find out much about Jason's early life and upbringing, but what I could gather from the research and interviews with his parents, um, his parents, Kent and Lisa, seemed to provide a really good life for him. Not necessarily, like, rich in the aspects of, like, money, but of, like, love and understanding. Um, AKA, you know, he lived a normal life with normal parents that loved him. Now, Jason must have been really smart and also just really good at music um, because he was accepted into the prestigious sound recording technology program at Texas State University. Um, I'm not 100% sure what that is. I meant to look into the program and I completely forgot, but... But it seems like he was kind of someone who's way better at kind of doing what I do. I don't know. If it, I mean, it sounds like it was more on the musical end. So he's probably like a sound engineer kind of or going for that maybe um, to like producing and editing and things like that. I think so. In general, I mean, that's really cool. I do the bare minimum, <laughs> on, you know, when I record my podcasts. I mean, I know how to cut things out and move things and whatnot, but nothing to the level I'm sure Jason was at or even higher, let's be honest. Jason started to make the two to three hour drive home in his tan Nissan Ultima, driving on Texas Route 80, passing under Interstate 35. At around 11.11 p.m., he makes it into this town called Martindale. A few minutes later, he goes through Hackberry Street and then continues on to Austin Tree, Austin Tree, Austin Street towards Magnolia Avenue. Now, according to his phone records and his last movements on Waze and Snapchat, this is where his digital trail ends. I personally have never heard of Waze. Obviously, I know what Snapchat is. I'm not that old. Um... But anyone out there, if you would like to like write in the comments somewhere, let me know what this is, what Waze is, because I have no idea. Just out of curiosity, you know, help a girl out. At around 1230, a volunteer fireman who was driving by spotted Jason's car. It had been crashed into a tree and abandoned on the 2300 block of Salt Flat Road. There was no sign of Jason. Hi, this is Dr. Andrew Rimby, and I'm really excited to talk to you all about one of our ITBR sponsors, Broadview Press. Broadview Press is an independent academic publisher in the humanities that produces high quality, pedagogically useful books for use in university and college classrooms. They publish mainly in English studies, writing, philosophy, and history. They are always publishing with an eye towards diversity, building a strong list of titles from women, people of color, and authors from other marginalized groups. If you haven't heard my Broadview Press interviews, you need to. Recently, I just had on Dr. Shannon Day, who talked about her book, Beyond the Binary, Thinking About Sex and Gender. And in the summer, I had on Dr. Jason Holt, who gave us all a comprehensive history of what it means to be a philosopher who studies sporting culture. And of course, we went back to ancient Greek, literature, mythology, history, to look at the roots of athleticism. And last year, I had on Dr. Jeffrey Andrew Weinstock, who's actually going to be coming on the podcast soon to give his thoughts on the new Fall of the House of Usher Netflix series. He talked all about pop culture for beginners. And Broadview Press is offering an exclusive discount because of our sponsorship. So head to broadviewpress.com where you're going to see such a wide range of literature. Use the code Ivory Tower, I V O R Y. T-O-W-E-R for 20% off site-wide all of their books. Again, it's Broadview Press, 
soapboxandwhy.com. Enjoy your reading. Hi, this is Andrew at the Soapbox and Why, a bath and body boutique in Port Jefferson Village on Long Island. And I'm going to announce a really fun cross promotion that I'm doing with Janine, the co-owner of the Soapbox. So I'm holding here Wicked, The Life and Times of the Wicked Witch of the West by Gregory Maguire, who I had the pleasure of interviewing on the podcast. Listen back to that episode. I'm hosting an ITBR book club. We're chatting all about Wicked. So join me on April 7th at 4 p.m. It's virtual, and you can be in your pajamas and be nice and cozy. And it's $4 to join. Go to at Ivory Tower Boiler Room and click the link in our bio to RSVP. So if Janine, I said, Janine, can you find a Team Glinda and a Team Alpha Bath and Body product? She found them. So I'm definitely Team Alpha. She's Team Glinda, unfortunately. Or fortunately, because we want you all in the comments to say which team you're on. Hi there, I'm definitely Team Glenda. And the pink product I chose to show you is by Farmhouse Fresh, and it is their Watermelon Aid Silky Gelay Serum. It is a wrinkled out gelay serum that consists of watermelon and CBD. It's vegan, it is animal cruelty free, and it's amazing. It's hyaluronic. And it helps to soften out any little fine lines that you might have around your face. Put it on right before your moisturizer, and it's amazing. And I think it's a lot better than my rival's product. I don't know. Team Alphaba's product is by Finchberry. It is, of course, called Emerald with a beautiful citrus and violet scent. I have to show you the bar. Look at all of these shades of Emerald. I think the Emerald City citizens would definitely use this in their shower. And the wizard... Oh, well, he would be putting this gold everywhere. So, I love Finchberry. They're a vegan-friendly and paraben-free company. So, I don't know. Are you Team Glinda with the watermelonade? Or are you Team Alphaba with the emerald soap? So, are you Team Alphaba with Finchberry? Or are you Team Glinda with Farmhouse Fresh's watermelonade? <gasps> Did you hear that? I just heard a cyclone. And look what we have. Looks like we found the Wicked Witch of the East ruby red slippers. Mm -hmm. You can also get these beautiful snoozies slippers at the Soapbox and Why before Dorothy steals them because mm -hmm. she's a pesky little girl. <laughs> okay, let us know which team you're on. So you all know that I am such a fan of musical theater and classic movies. So I can't wait for you all to listen to one of my good friends' podcasts, it's called That Old Gay Classic Cinema, hosted by Christian Garcia. It's a podcast that looks at classic cinema films that we know and love. And he was inspired by Turner Classic Movies and The Great Movie Ride. Remember that amazing ride where the Wicked Witch of the West grows up in a burst of flame in Disney? That was one of my favorite rides. I'm so sad it closed. So... While looking at classic films, Christian is so excited to look at it with a queer lens, and he brings on friends like myself to talk about all of these films. I was on the first episode when we discussed The Sound of Music. I've been on an episode of Alfred Hitchcock's Vertigo. He just released an episode about the Philadelphia story. He's done Meet Me in St. Louis, Sweet Charity, Psycho, Mary Poppins, Hello, Dolly, he had on Down the Yellow Brick Road hosts and the Garland Gab hosts to talk about The Wizard of Oz. So make sure that you listen to That Old Gay Classic Cinema on Apple and Spotify and follow him on TikTok and Instagram at That Old Gay Classic Cinema. Okay, start watching the classic movies and make sure you listen to Christian's podcast. When Jason's car was discovered, the lights were still on, the keys were still in the ignition, but the front passenger side door was locked and the rear window was broken. Investigators on the scene believe that Landry crashed into a tree and barbed wire fence after overcorrecting on a gravel road and spun out. There's no other evidence to prove if another vehicle was involved in the crash and based off of like the fact, again, that he crashed into a tree through a barbed wire you know after going through a barbed wire fence you know that it just made sense 
And again, like I said, there was no evidence of any other car being involved. And all of the damage to the car seemed to just be from this crash. However, though, the internal, like the inside of the car, was never actually investigated before being sent to the impound lot. Jason's parents, Kent and Lisa, wouldn't be notified until later that morning. Now, Jason's father, Kent, was the registered owner of the car. So because of that, he was notified when the car was impounded. He then arrived at the impound lot at around 5.30 a.m., when it opened pretty much to get his son's car and kind of investigate because Kent was actually a former defense attorney who became a pastor. So he is actually very familiar with, you know, crime scene investigation and things of that nature. So inside the car, he starts looking around for clues and between the driver's seat and the center console is Jason's phone. So he takes the phone. It doesn't seem like there's anything else really as that could be helpful to police. So he takes the phone and goes to the scene of the crash. Kent arrived about a half hour later and was honestly shocked and a little disturbed by what he saw. There were very few police, no investigators, and his son's belongings were strewn out across the road. He basically had to help them find clues, which, I mean, given everything that he had to go, like, is going through right now, in this moment, like, I can't fucking even. <laughs> like, I'm sure he is trying to wrap his brain around what is happening just from the sheer shock of it all. I can't even imagine. And then, like, having to help them find clues <sighs> is fucked up. So about 900 feet away from the crash, Kent finds his son's backpack and he takes it to a trooper who then takes that in for evidence. Inside, they find just his laptop, um, his wallet that had a little bit of weed in it, which, you know, it's whatever, and um, a video game console that he had in there and just normal personal belongings. You know, there again, wasn't really much there. Now, 100 feet away from the the accident Jason's clothes ones that he was thought to be wearing that night and a wristwatch were just found like socks underwear everything and Kent says that at one point he know like obviously he was pretty sure that these were his son's clothing but a specific pair of sun uh Spongebob socks that he saw he was like yeah no those were those are 100% sure my kids So, I mean, and again, that's just so sad. Also was found around the scene was a baseball cap, a bag filled with toiletries. And this hurts my heart because it's a tumbler with his dead betta fish, which I'm guessing he was bringing home with him like and had and probably, you know, was like his friend throughout 2020. I can't imagine being in college and having, you know really no contact at that time so I'm sure that fish meant a lot to him and just just the notion that he was bringing his pet fish home (sighs) so sad now a pair of shorts that again they thought he was wearing was found with a blood smear on the hip area but the amount of blood that was found wasn't large enough and it could have been made from him maybe trying to go through the barbed wire fence Again, because there wasn't a lot of blood, they could only imagine that this injury wasn't serious or fatal. Because again, if it was, there would have been a lot more blood. Later that day, Jason Landry was declared missing. And he is still missing to this day. Extensive searches have been conducted up until as recently as January 2023. Anyone with information regarding Jason Landry's disappearance is encouraged to contact the Texas OAG's Cold Case and Missing Persons Unit at www.texasattorneygeneral.gov slash coldcasetips. All right, my loves, that is all I have for you this week. I hope you enjoy your weekend, get some rest, take care of your mental health, your physical health, all the things. 
Don't forget to follow True Crime and Academia on social media. On Instagram, TikTok, and Threads, we're at True Crime and Academia. And on X slash Twitter, we are at at TC in Academia. If you would like to listen to this episode and other episodes of True Crime and Academia ad-free, as well as have access to bonus episodes, go to patreon.com slash ivorytowerboilerroom. And for the price of a coffee, you can get access to all of that. So, you know, it would be nice. Help a girl out. I need the coffee. Oh, the coffee. All right, my loves. And until next week, I will see you all later.